welcome to the SC2K show. This is Ron Moore, and I am here with Retro Gaming Star, Retro ECW Star. How's it going? Going awesome. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, no problem. And last week, me and Danny interviewed Mega Dan, and so this week I am interviewing Retro Gaming Star, who has been on YouTube doing Let's Plays and streams for a while. Is that right? Um, yeah, my first Let's Play that I did was Pokemon Generation 1. It was Pokemon Yellow version, and um, I was going to do Crystal version originally, but um, that stream is on hiatus for right now because the recording software is just crazy, man. I couldn't get any contact of software on my phone, so I got to make do. I got to find some software, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and so uh, when did you get started on YouTube? Well, I started back in 2016. Now, for all of you who knew me on, on my channel, you knew me as Retro Master 360 Gil, and um, I thought the name was just plain, you know, stupid, so I changed it to Team Shaolin Star, and I thought that name was dumb and it wasn't game related, so I turned it to Retro Gaming Star, and here I am now. Ah, uh, okay. And so what has been your favorite project that you've done thus far on YouTube? Um, the collab with Dark Moon 75. I think that, you know, the whole, um, why I love Pokemon so much with Dark Moon. I did a whole collab video with him and I, I thank him for that because he was the saving grace of that whole, you know, um, collab and, um, what he did was really amazing. I really cared about, you know, my good buddy Darkman because he's, he's my best friend and I really care about him. I have a lot of friends now, you know, high high places and low places. And I think that that was a good time for me to be a YouTuber, you know? Like, I'm not into, I'm not in for YouTube for money. I'm in it to have fun, you know? I like doing YouTube for fun things, not for money, not for e-begging, just to have fun because that's what it's about, fun, right? Exactly, yeah, that's why I do it. I do it for fun. I've done it for fun for about 13 years now. Yeah, ECW Moon, uh, he seems like a pretty cool dude. I've watched some of his streams. He streamed Simon's Quest not too long ago, taught me a secret that I didn't know. And I've been playing Simon's Quest for like 30 years. And he taught me a little glitch where wow. there's like invisible stairs at this dead end part of the game. It's like this. It looks like you, you can go up these stairs, but they're invisible. Turns out it's probably like a programming glitch, or they forgot to. They were gonna put stairs right there, but for some reason, maybe they forgot to. I don't know. Oh wow! I had no idea you played Simon's Quest for thirty years. Like, I remember my mom um, rented um, Castlevania Two Simon's Quest from Blockbuster back in the early nineteen nineties, and. I was like maybe three or four years old and she had an NES, she played the game and after a while she got sick and tired of it so she let me and my sister play. Me and my sister played the game we actually got to the end and we beat the whole game. But we got the bad ending. Yeah, I got the ending too where everything's in black and white and the one of the colorful endings is where Simon dies and then the best ending is where Dracula's hand comes from the grave. And I didn't know that ending right there existed until like years later when the internet became big and I was like oh there's and the, an ending. the angry video game nerd right no it wasn't even that where I discovered it from I discovered it from uh, just looking it up online and then showing the endings and at first I knew about I thought there was only one ending the one where it's black and white and then oh um, years later I played it and I beat it and I accidentally somehow got the uh, sad ending where he dies and then years later on the internet, I find out of the uh, the best ending where Dracula's hand comes from the grave. I was like, "Whoa, wait a minute!" And so it's it's just one of those great moments where you discover something new about a game you play for so long. It seems like there's always gonna be something new to learn. And oh wow, because I got all my video game knowledge from the angry video game nerd. Yeah, that was his first review. And just like Goemon 47 when I first saw that review, I was kind of angry because I was like, hey man, don't diss uh, one of my favorite games. But the AVGN had a good point and a lot of the flaws that the game had. Yeah, he did. He did. I agree. He did. Yeah. And, yeah. And me and my friends enjoyed playing Simon's Quest a lot when we were kids trying to figure this out, figure that out. And it was fun to play and, and, and try to figure out because... 
that game was pretty challenging back then. It was like my first nonlinear game that I played. Yeah, it was like it was like like it, it, like the choppiness of the NES days. Like every time you get hit by an enemy, you get knocked back and you fall into like a bottomless pit and die. Yeah, and so that is until Super Castlevania Four came out and fixed everything. Yeah, Super ECWvania Four. <laughs> um, yeah, I, yeah, I got you. There. You got me there, buddy. What is your overall favorite game? Like overall. Um, overall favorite game? That's kind of hard. I like a lot of games, mainly the good ones. But my favorite game, my favorite RP, well, it's an RPG. My favorite RPG game would probably be Pokemon because that's what I grew up with. Like, I remember all my friends at my elementary school talking about Pokemon and um talking about the anime that was going to air on Kids WB and all that and talking about, you know, Ash Ketchum, the main character, and what he did, what he would what he would look like, and um, his partner, they said, I bet you anything it's Clefairy, no it's Pikachu, no it's Clefairy, no it's Pikachu, and, and um, eventually I said, I said, I told my friends that it's Pikachu, because that is the po the mascot for Pokemon, and uh, eventually, my friends didn't believe me at first, but then later, later down the road when they watched the anime, they believed me because they watched it for the very first time. And um, I also collected the Pokemon TCG trading card game, and um, I have a lot of fond memories with that. I played Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, but mostly Yellow because I like Pikachu, and you know, Pokemon was the definitive my definitive childhood. Like I remember playing Generation Two the first time in Gen Three on the Game Boy Advance and Generation 4, but my favorite Pokemon game would be either Gen 4, Gen 5, or Gen 5 Part 2, because that's what, you know, I was Pokemon, I was a major Pokemon fan, I was a Pokemon fanatic, like, um, my friend Rodden Games, like, he loved Pokemon, and I, 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 sh I he shared his experience with, with his viewers and with me, and, um, I said Pokemon it was awesome, I, I, I even commented on one of his videos, I said Pokemon was was the best thing from in my childhood, and um, we both have an understanding. We both love Pokemon, and that's a good franchise to go out with, you know. What about G Generation E C W? Generation E C W. Yeah, if only Nintendo did that, it'd be probably a Pokemon's um wrestling death match or something. If yeah. Nintendo were to like do that, probably I don't know. I don't know what Nintendo's playing with Pokemon, but um, I think that after they're gonna probably do Generation Nine later on the road. But I think yeah, they're stopping at this point because Nintendo is out of ideas for Pokemon, and I I really feel for them, man. Really do. They can come up with a make maybe have it at the Pokemon ECW Stadium. Oh, that's a, that would be awesome, man. If Pokemon, I want to see Pikachu um, elbow drop somebody. I want to see Charman, Charmeleon um, do a, um, a suplex. I want to see um, Blastoise do like a, um, a, like you know that wrestling move where they flip off the tight rope and they land on you. Yeah. I want to see Blastoise do that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, maybe a shooting star press or a moonsault. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Nintendo did the Pokemon wrestling game, but they're probably not because they're Pokemon down at this point. They're focusing on Mario and Zelda and and Metroid and you know um, Animal Crossing and all these other franchises. They have so many IPs to work on, and I understand that. How about that'd be cool? You know, they, got, they got Super Smash Brothers. How about Super ECW Brothers? It's like a Nintendo oh, that wrestling game. <laughs> Oh yeah, Super EC, ECW yeah. Brothers, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I want to see um, Mario, you know, I want to see Mario just elbow drop somebody. I want to see Donkey Kong, you know, um, do, do the choke slam like, um, what's his name, The Undertaker. I want to see, no, not, I think it was Kane, was it Kane or The Undertaker that did that? They both did. Yeah, they both did, yeah. I want to see the Burst of Destruction, which is Donkey Kong and Bowser. Yeah, that'd be cool. And they yeah, have a lot of Bowser as a heel, his own heel stable, and his children being the stable with him. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Back I then, agree. Back then, I think it was on 
WWF attitude for 64. Oh yeah, I remember the, the attitude of WWF. Uh, my favorite part of that was D-Generation X. Yeah, my friend Venner22 has been in a lot of my older videos. He created for the creator wrestler section Mario and Luigi as a tag team. Oh wow, D, D Generation X is in the house. And I remember this wrestler, this female wrestler, her name is China. Yeah, I remember her. Yeah, yeah she was a very good wrestler in the Ultimate Warrior. You had Paul Hogan, you had The Rock, you had all these different wrestlers. But then after the 90s, that's when they stopped caring about wrestling. Nowadays, it's just WWE and all these new wrestlers that I don't even know and don't even remember, you know? Yeah. I can see Luigi being a part of DX because he wears green and Mario being a member of Wolfpack because he wears red. Just having being yeah. red and black and then Luigi green and, green and black for DX. Oh, wow. That would be awesome. Even though their characters don't really fit that group, but I guess they're kind of wearing the right colors. But, yeah, I, I do agree with you. What were some of your favorite wrestling games you already played back in the day? Um, My favorite one by far is WWF No Mercy. I had the most memories yeah, with that game. That's a great one. No, Mer no Mercy was awesome. Like you had, um, you can create a character, or create a wrestler, or create a, you can do whatever you want in that game. I felt like, hey, I felt like I was a wrestler in that game. I felt like I was a rock. I felt like I was Stone Cold Steve Austin. I felt like I was all these different wrestlers, and that was just awesome. I loved WWF No Mercy so much that. I bought the game the day after I rented it on the N64. Yeah, I personally prefer WrestleMania 2000 out of all the 64. Yeah, that's, 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 that's another good one. Yeah, I've been streaming that in Revenge a lot lately. No Mercy has been a while. Oh, you mean, so not, mean now Intro Revenge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or WC, WCW. Yeah, WCW NWO Revenge, yeah, for 64. Oh yeah, that'd be awesome, bro. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, actually, you, you stream those games? Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I've been streaming them lately. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's all. Those are awesome games. But my favorite would be No Mercy because you know the theme is so it's it's just awesome. I love it so much, and I think that you know wrestling will always be will always stand the test of time because all these wrestlers doing all these different moves and stuff and whatnot. I think it's amazing like um it's amazing how people like wrestlers when they go in the ring they get hurt for our entertainment so they say when we put in a wrestling dvd they say please don't try this at home because they want kids to they want to kid they want the kids to care about their safety and everything yeah if you know what i mean and i can understand it if people don't like it but what kind of runs me hot is when people say oh it's fake i'm like but so are movies Movies are entertainment. Movies are scripted. Yeah, yeah. It may be I do fake, agree with you. But it's, it's, I mean, it may be scripted, but it's not quote unquote fake as far as how they put their bodies on the line and what they got to do to entertain. Yeah, wrestling is not fake. I really, I used to think that when I was younger, but nope. I learned the hard truth, the harsh cold truth about WWE on YouTube back in 2008, and it's not fake because. They put their bodies on the line and they end up getting injured and going to the hospital. They bleed, they sweat, they do all that stuff. And um, I, I, I was shocked. I thought wrestling was a fake sport when I was younger. But I learned the ugly truth about it. And I, I thank YouTube for that because if it wasn't for my godmother or my mother or um, my father or my sisters, my uncles, my nieces, my nephews, I wouldn't be the person I am today. I wouldn't be a YouTuber. I'd probably be some low life, you know, for uh, probably a low life or something. But I thank a lot of my family members for who I am because I love YouTube. I love it so much. And I love all, every single YouTuber that I come across. I would subscribe to their channel. I would support them. I would do anything for any YouTuber because they're my quote unquote family and they are my friends. And I think of every YouTube member as a good friend. And that's what YouTube is about. It's about friendships, bonding, caring, respect, loyalty. 
not about this anger and hatred and violence and spreading negative word and all that crap. No, it's not about that. It's about peace, if you catch my drift. Right. Also, loyalty, respect. I guess is what John Cena would say, too. Um... Yeah, I remember John Cena back in 2004. He says, catchphrase was, you can't see me, my time is now. Yep. A friend of mine, Dagger's a huge John Cena fan. I only cared about seeing him when he was the doctor of thugonomics. Oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that. He used to roast a lot of wrestlers back when he was the doctor, the doctor of thugonomics. He used to, he roasted, um, what's his name? I forgot the dude, but he roasted him so bad. Yeah, I remember he had a freestyle you... battle with Kurt Angle. A freestyle rap. Oh, battle. yeah. That... And Kurt Angle tried to rap. He goes, My name is Kurt Angle, and what the heck? I want a gold medal oh. with a broken freaking neck. <laughs> oh, well, I remember that. That was the highlight of WWE in the, in the early 2000s. Like, my, you know my, bro, my my foster brother, Eric, right? He would, no, my, no, my foster brother, Eric, he loved wrestling so much that he bought every single SmackDown vs. Raw video game on PS2. He paid almost $200 out of his pocket for those games. And he got a bunch of other games too, but he played wrestling the most. He played SmackDown vs. Raw. He played Smack all the other SmackDown vs. Raw games. And every time we battled in SmackDown vs. Raw, he beat me. And so in when he played WF No Mercy, he did the same thing. He was the wrestling master of video games. He knew exactly what button to press, what to do, and everything. Eric, he was younger than me. Like, I didn't know nothing about this WWE stuff. I know about WWF because, hey, that's what I grew up with, you know? Yeah, and Mega Dan just recently sent me SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 on the PS2 because that's my overall favorite wrestling game. And had a lot of fun with it. Watching the ECW matches, Sandman winning the ECW title. Uh, it was a fun yeah. stream, and I loved it back in the day. I played throughout the whole season mode. I tried to think general manager mode. I created my own characters. Uh, fun wrestling game right there. Do you remember when they added a create a story feature in in SmackDown vs. Raw, and they got implemented into the 2K games like? You can create your very own story, you can like narrate how it's going to end and how it's going to begin. Remember that? Uh, which version was that? Because I didn't pretty play, play it anymore. 2010. Smackdown versus Raw. It was Smackdown versus Raw 2010. Yes, yeah, so I didn't play a really play any of them anymore past 2008. Oh, wow. Like, um, if... Like, you gotta... I, I, I highly recommend you play the 2010, that's what I'm talking but, no, but, um... I think, have you played the 2K games? You ever played the wrestling, the WWE 2K games? I only played 2K15. Yeah, that game was good. I heard a lot of good things about it, but, um, yeah, I, I love wrestling, but I like the attitude there. I stopped watching it a long time ago. Yeah. The first SmackDown vs. Raw for PS2, when it first came out, you can now play wrestling matches online. And me and my friend Swing. Oh, yeah, I remember that. M M oh, Rock Ron Do you remember Dial Up? Yeah, but we didn't, uh, yeah, we didn't play it on. We could, I don't think you could play online Dial Up, can you? You wouldn't support it. I don't think you can. Yeah, it. you could. You have to connect an Ethernet cable to your phone, and then it goes straight to the internet. Like, it, the thing I hated about Ethernet was this obnoxious screeching noise it would make. Like, it was so annoying that I left the room and went to go watch Power Rangers or yeah. Digimon. I couldn't. Like, I don't know. How, how would it, it would really work? Because it seemed like it would be slow if it was on dial-up. No, it, it turns out um, we played, um, my sister was um, going to get a game called Final Fantasy XI, but she didn't have the money. She had a couple online games, but she didn't know how to, con how to connect it. But when, when we put it into the phone, it was making that screeching noise. It was crazy. I remember that internet noise. It was crazy, man. It was extremely nuts. Yeah. It was so nuts, man. I, I can't take it. I went to grandma and just grabbed some water, drank some water, and went to go watch TV or play my my, my games. Because, oh, speaking of video games, the first video game console I ever had was a Sega Master System. I didn't have an NES. My NES was my mom's. 
if I wanted to play Mario or Zelda, I had to ask my mom. And I pretty much had to ask everybody around the house because if I take stuff, that I'll be stealing and I'd be wrong. So I, I had to basically, you know, I had to go ask my mom if I can play Mario and she on to say no, sometimes you say yes. But I had my most experience with the Sega Master System. That was a great console. And then later I got the Genesis and the Sega CD too. Yeah, I remember the Master System. I got that before I ever had an NES. Yeah, the Master System was awesome. Yeah. And so, what is your overall favorite video game console? I would say the Sega Genesis. Because that's what I grew up with. Um, I played the Sega Genesis to death because I love it so much. And I remember, like, Nintendo back in the day, Nintendo and Sega. Nintendo was the, if you remember, it was the family-friendly company. Well, Sega was more edgy for, like, teens and adults. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, I was more of the, I was that, I was that edgy kid who played Sonic the Hedgehog. I played Toe Jam Earl, um, Vector Man, Rise Star, Fancy Star, all the great games, all the classic games. I played the Sonic Genesis games. I played um, I played Mega Man: The Wily Wars. I got it. The Europe. I got the European version. I my mom one day went out and and um, imported the game from Europe and I got it. And um, I played the very first Fancy Star game. I played um, Fancy Star 2, Fancy Star 3, Fancy Star 4. I played. Um, Earthworm Jim, I played um, um, second, Gunstar Heroes. I played that game. I played um, I played The Simpsons. But that the Virtual Bark game, I didn't like it. So I returned it to Blockbuster and got um, what's that game? I got um, Mind Morphin Power Rangers. I enjoyed Streets yeah. of ECW one and two. Oh, ECW. I mean, I mean Streets of Rage. Oh yeah, I remember. I remember those games. Streets of Rage was the tits back in the '90s. It was such a good game. Like you, you be uh, around, you be hanging around the cool people playing Streets of Rage. Like the Super. Like, now, if you think about it now, the Super Nintendo had Final Fight, while the Genesis had Streets of Rage. Yeah, and I so much preferred Streets of Rage. Yeah, I love Streets of Rage too. I preferred over Final Fight because my fr at my fr I went to my friend's house. My friend Richard had um, a Super Nintendo and he had Final Fight. And um, I said, "Hey, Levon, is there any beat 'em up?" The Richard asked me, "Hey, Levon, is there any beat 'em ups on Genesis? Yeah, there's Streets of Rage." And he went over to my house and played Streets of Rage, and he actually enjoyed it. We both played co-op together, which is really cool. Yeah, Streets of Rage um, One was the first Genesis game that I beat. Yeah, I, I I didn't beat Streets of Rage one. I, I beat two and three, but not one. I gotta get back to that because I was on the um. I'll tell you the story. I was on the last level of the game, right, where I had to fight the boss, and um, he power punched me or something. And I, I I lost all my lives. And I got a game over. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Mr. X. Yeah, Mr. X, the final boss. Yes, I remember him. Mr. X can be a hard guy. He can be really hard if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, he probably uh, pi but, pistol whips you or rifle whips you. He hits you with that gun. Or you get too close to him. Yeah. And yeah, him. I was trying to I was trying to punch him, but he 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 pistol whipped me, and I lost I lost all my health, and I got a game over, and I used up all my continues. Have you played the remake? It's a fan made game that came out in I think 2012. If I'm not mistaken. No, I did not. No, I didn't. What's it? What's it like? It's a fan-made game. It's freaking awesome, man. It's like Street Rage one, two, and three combined. You can take different routes in the story mode when we play the game. Take which route you want to take, and you can. I got. I got to do that's a live stream. So many characters. I re we did a low budget review of it on my Rumble channel back in 20 yeah 2012 2013. Uh, we did a let's play of it on this channel on the S2K channel around that same time. And yeah, it's an awesome fan fan made game. Very, you, you would think it was done by Sega themselves, but it was done by a company called Bomber Games, an independent gaming company. And they brought the concept to Sega, but Sega, because they wanted to say, "Hey, Sega, look what we did with your IP. 
do you want to do business? You can, you can make some big money off of this. But instead, they go, no, cease and desist. So now it was it became harder to find the game because Sega put a cease and desist order on it, which legally they do have the right to What? Make. But if Sega was smart, they would have made a ton of money off of that. I would have been glad to pay yeah, for that. Yeah, if, if, Sega, if Sega was smart, they wouldn't. I agree. They, they, they did make some dumb decisions. Like, the Dreamcast was a very good console, but the, it was outsold by the PlayStation 2. Well, well, no, the PS2 outsold the Dreamcast, and it lost the war. And then, after that, they stopped manufacturing hardware and they made games. Yeah. Yeah, and so... Yeah, I miss... I miss... Oh, it's an awesome game. You gotta check that. If you can find it somewhere, it's hard to find because they put a cease and desist order on it. Uh, I'm sure you could probably download it from somewhere, but Sega doesn't want it around because... It's their IP, which I get it. They legally own the rights, so, or do they anymore? Who, who made Street Fighter Rage Four? Was it Sega or? Um, I I think it was Sega. Because I don't see any. Because I thought when I was looking for, I don't know if, it's, if Sega was still working on it or if they sold the rights to someone else. But, um, but, but if they were smart, they would have capitalized on that Street Fighter Rage remake. And there's videos of it all over YouTube. You can check it out. You can unlock characters. You, you can unlock Mr. X with a machine gun and everything. You can unlock Mr. X. You can oh, unlock cool. Shiva. You can play a Shiva. You can unlock Shiva. You can unlock so many different uh, I think other characters on there. Rue as well from Street Race 3. Um, man, this is an awesome game. It's so well done. And so I'm gonna play it. just didn't want to do business. It's like, you know, no wonder you're a third party company now. If you'd be smarter, Maybe you still be around as a console company. You just Sega just they really irritated me with that. They could have made so much money off the Street of Rage remake. It was so well done. I think it took yeah. Bomber Games almost ten years probably to make it. The what four? No, uh, the remake. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. It's good that to see other video game companies take inspiration and just make other um, great classics and make make them like make them better. You know. So, what is your favorite type of video game? You might have answered this already. Uh, maybe RPGs or, or, or adventure. Yeah. yeah, RPGs your favorite. RPG. Type? I also like action RPGs. I once played a game on a Nintendo DS called Spectrobes. Now, Spectrobes is made by Disney and Jupiter, and um, it was a science fiction based game where you played as a boy named Rollin, and he had a partner named Gina. And they were both officers of the galaxy, and they had to find spectrobes, escalate fossils, and save the Nanorio system from and, and like these alien creatures called Crawl. And in the second game, they confront an enemy. I don't know, what the, I don't know the name of the enemy, but they confront it, and I actually beat both games: um, Spectrobes One and Spectrobes Beyond the Portal. So those games were good. But the third game was basically a prequel to the first two, which confused the ever living hell out of me. Like, wait, what? I thought this was the third game. But it's a prequel to the first two games? Okay, cool. Yeah, chronologically confused. Yeah, like with Zelda. I was chronologically confused with Castlevania 3 and Metal Gear Solid 3. Because Castlevania 3 is a prequel, and so is Metal Gear Solid 3. And I hate it when companies do that. I'm like, if it's a prequel, don't call it three, because three makes people think. Call it the first game. Yeah, people, or give it a different name or something like Metal Gear Solid, Snake Eater. Don't put three in there, because you're making us think, oh, okay. And, and now you can read the reviews or the the plot before the game comes out and all that stuff today on the internet, so you would know ahead of time it's a prequel. But still, like if if it's not a sequel, don't give it the next number in line. You know what I mean? Like. Just take yeah, I, out. I understand you, buddy. I understand you. I understand you. And Castlevania 3, they should just, you know, Castlevania Dracula's Curse. That would have been awesome. But. Yeah. But yeah, um, so RPGs, you know, I, I could not get into RPGs. It's definitely not my cup of tea. But I did enjoy Chrono Trigger. I called it ECW Trigger. Oh, oh, Chrono Trigger was awesome. And so was the sequel. Chrono Cross on the PS1. That was a good game. But I love the RPG because I like to think when I'm playing games. Like, I like to use my brain. I like to use my brain power. I like to think. I like to do stuff. I like to, like, battle enemies and gain experience points from monsters and stuff. And 
and upgrade my items to make them stronger. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I'm just not good at doing that. I mean, I'm much better at adventure games like Zelda or point and click adventure oh, games Zelda's, like Oh, Zelda's Shotgate. awesome. Yeah. Zelda's awesome. And I, I also like adventure games like, I like the action adventure games like Mario Brothers and Mega Man and Castlevania. I like Contra. I liked a lot of games that came out. My favorite game on the Super Nintendo, I don't know if I told anybody this, it was The Legend of the Mystical Ninja. Now, I played that game. That was a platforming game. I played it and they didn't localize the character properly, but I played the game and I beat the game. I, I rescued the princess and everything. It was amazing. And they made it, I mean, two N64 games called Legend of Mystical Ninja starring Goemon and Goemon 2, which, which is also called Legend of Mystical Ninja 2 starring Goemon, which is a, r a really good game. So, um, yeah, I think I think that the Legend of Mystical games are good. If, if Konami were to, like, do a remake, which I know they're not, because, you know, Konami, Konami used to be good back in the day, but I don't know what happened to them. Yeah, they changed. It's not my, yeah. Konami, my childhood, I'll tell you that. Yeah, my childhood was um, Contra, um, what else? Um, um, Castlevania and Legend of Mystical Ninja. Yeah, I so loved Castlevania and Contra. And I recently played like No Death Run of Contra uh, a few months ago. Oh, you did? I, I remember that. That was awesome. That was amazing. You did an excellent job with that No Death Run. I'm, if I, I, I'm gonna do a no death run too. I'm gonna try to no death run. Um, I'm gonna try to no death run. That's a mystical ninja if I can. But if I can't, I can't. But hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. Yeah, I'm trying no death run super C right now. I failed recently, but I'm still I'm still gonna try every once in a while, every now and then, until I get it. Yeah. And Mega Dan no death really, run. Because Contra Shattered Soldier. I, that was hard. Oh, awesome! That was so amazing. I love that. I have seen his live stream and um. You and Megadam inspired me to do no death runs. You guys really inspired me. You guys gave me a challenge, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm gonna do that challenge on my channel. I'm gonna do for no death runs on my stream and stuff. I'm going to um, play lots of games, you know, of, with no death runs, but not RPGs. RPGs are impossible to do no death runs of. Yeah. Um. What are your, what is your proudest? Like we, Mega Dan talked about one of his, I don't know if it's his top proudest gaming achievement moment, but definitely up there. He beat Battletoads, without, he did a no death run of Battletoads. What would you say, what would you say is your best uh, gaming achievement that you're so proud of? Hmm, you're right. I was proud that I collected all six Chaos Emeralds in the original Sonic the Hedgehog, because in Sonic the Hedgehog 2 there were seven, but in the original there were only six. My mom, my mom was all like, hey, LeVon, did you beat the game? And I remember beating Sonic the Hedgehog the first time, and I didn't get all the Chaos Emeralds, and I saw Dr. Robotnik doing this, juggling the Chaos Emeralds with, you know, one hand, like two hands, and um, he said, look, my mom was like, LeVon, you gotta get all the Chaos Emeralds. So she gave me a challenge. She said, if I can get all six Chaos Emeralds in the game without dying once, I could get, you know, another game for my my uh, my Sega Genesis, and I did just that, and um, I collected all six Chaos Emeralds without dying. I didn't I didn't lose a life. I didn't get get hit by Batnik. I didn't, you know, um, fall into spikes or fall into pits. I did exactly what my mom told me. I won, and I discovered a game called Fancy Star One. I mean, no, no, Fancy Star Four. That's how I got into Fancy Star Four because um. I, I didn't know there was a fourth entry, and I, I saw that Blockbuster, was like, Mom, can I get this game? And she bought it for me. And I played it, and it was awesome. So, my proudest gaming achievement moment is when I beat Sonic the Hedgehog 1, collected all six Chaos Emeralds without dying. Nice, dude. Uh, yeah, I did too with Sonic 1. I never got to do it with Sonic 2. And I remember Yeah, Sonic 2, you gotta, you, you gotta pick Sonic only, because if you have Tails with you, it's gonna be difficult. Yeah, he would mess me up. He made me so mad. And I tells you, idiot, move out the way. And it was so frustrating yeah. with Tails. Uh, with Sonic 1, I got all six ECW Emeralds. Uh, so th that was pretty cool, but I never got to do that in Sonic 2. Yeah, Sonic 2 had seven, seven Chaos Emeralds. Sonic 1 only had six. Like, I remember when I first played Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic was a really good, really good game. I, um, I sped past the Green Hill Zone. 
I in Fancy Star Four there was a reference to Sonic. There was a book in like the um library. If you read one of the books, it says Run Hedgehog Run. If you know what I'm saying, if you if you catch my drift and everything yeah. like. Sonic was a very good game, but I'm not sure if they're saying they're gonna make another. They probably might do the remake or something of Sonic Adventure One and Two, which I I, I just, uh, it might happen. You never know. Yeah. Did you ever play Sonic 06? Oh that oh that game was terrible. That game was the worst Sonic game I've ever played. Now, I I think the angry video game nerd said it best. It was the worst Sonic game of all time because I I played that game back when it was released in 2006 and um I remember seeing trailers for it on um at E3, on E3 on YouTube and I was excited for the game. I bought the game. I was so pissed off. I went to GameStop and returned the game and got a different game. It was so disappointing for me because Sonic 06 was those games that it's one of those it's one of those bad games you just don't like because. Sega, as a company, they had the balls to call it Sonic the Hedgehog, and um, I said, hey, you guys are just disappointing, man, I'm sorry, I can't take Sega anymore, because what they did, they took, they, they took the world's fastest hedgehog, which was Sonic, and they just flat out made a mockery out of them, you know, they ruined his reputation, and people um, made fun of him ever since, and I hated that. I just absolutely hate that about Sonic. Like, Sonic was the coolest hedgehog around. And Sega, when Sonic 06 came out, Sega made him into a big joke. And I was pissed off. Yeah, I never played that. You know what I mean. I never played that, but I've seen it. And I've seen AVGN review it. And I heard nothing but bad things about it. And there's another Sonic game I haven't played either, but I've seen. It's Sonic the Hedgehog for the GameCom. Have you heard about this? Uh, oh, for the GameCom? There's a Sonic game for the GameCom? Oh, 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 you're talking Sonic Jam. Oh, that game's bad. The, yeah, Sonic the, the Jam. The GameCom version, version, I don't recommend it. It's terrible. I don't like the GameCom version. I don't like it at all. The GameCom, when I first came out, when, when, when Trey first came out, he called, the guy called every, the, the, the consumers, you know, he said it to the consumers, he says uh, that we, we, it, that the, the guy said that we were idiots and we had and, and we um had no brain cells. Remember that commercial? Oh, that's the commercial, yeah. Uh, Yo, know, this game, this system has more games than you idiots have brain cells. And like, what the heck? I was so mad. Like, not good marketing. how dare they pick on us like that? Not good marketing. And the thing is, I saw Rerez's review of the GameCom. And yeah, I did too. I saw that. I remember that commercial when I was a kid. And uh, yeah, it just, uh, you had that guy get on there, and Rerez was talking about 100, 100 billion is like the average number of brain cells in our brain, uh, or whatever the number was, like 100 billion, whatever. And the GameCom, the commercial said, this this has more games than you, it is have brain cells. And I was mad as hell. And Rerez said 20. In the three year lifespan of the GameCom, they only had 20 games. We have more than 20 yeah, brain cells. Yeah, I know, cells. I know, I know, I know. We have more than 20 brain cells. We have more than, we have a lot of brain cells. More than the GameCom. The GameCom was just a failure. It was a fluke and it was a flop. And I can't agree with I, them anymore. I remember the commercial vaguely in 97. And I seen ABGM when he was reviewing the Tiger handheld consoles. He reviewed the GameCom as well. And Yeah, he did that. But he, he didn't go in depth with the GameCom like he did, like Redress did, because ABGM was talking about mainly the the Tiger little Tiger handheld and how they were garbage. Yeah, yep. you know, back then I kind of had fun with some of them, but that didn't last long. They don't age well. It, it's just something. Yeah, that's... yeah. I remember I had a Mega Man. Um, I had a Mega Man one, I had a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers one, I had a Dragon Ball one, and um, my friend had one. It was a um, what's it? It was a um. Dragon Ball Z um, Tiger Electronic game, and he didn't like it. So, want to know what he did? Burned it. He's nope. He threw it in the garbage. He said, yeah. "You know what, Devon? This is you're right. This ain't worth playing." So he, when he was at recess at school, he took the GameCom and just you know he took the um uh, the, the Tiger Electronic handheld and threw it in the garbage. Said it wasn't worth it. Yeah. It's not worth it. Yeah, I've seen it. And it's like, what were they thinking? Like. 
in, in 1989, the Game Boy came out, and that was a different. Yeah, game. And it, 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 it revolutionized the um with the interchangeable cartridges and everything, and it became a, a popular handheld, and it was created by a man named Gumpe Akoi. Yeah, and so the Game Boy, at, at, I mean, it lasted for a good while, and but in '97, technology had changed. Technology moves at the speed of light. So, 97, technology is more advanced now, and you had the Game Gear come out after Game Boy, and then you, then they come out with that with GameCom, which, if you put the two games side to side, or like, let's say, like Rerest showed, for example, in his video, he showed footage on the left of Jurassic Park for Game Gear, and on the right, Jurassic Park for GameCom. If... You I think the Game, better, Gear, the Game Gear version looks better. Yeah, the Game you Gear know better, you would better. think that the Game Gear was the newer system but no but no nope, it was wasn't the system and it was inferior like how embarrassing is that so Tiger, yeah, it yeah. was it was embarrassing as heck bro. i agree with you they did not have the eye of the tiger when it came came to the video game market and that's why they failed and they went out of business exactly 2000 yeah. i think that was the end of uh, that was the end of the game comp for sure that might have been the end of tiger as well yeah there are a lot of video game companies that bit the dust, like, for example, LJN. They made bad games. Some I enjoyed, but mostly the majority of them were just terrible. Like, um, I remember my friend had Who Framed Roger Rabbit on NES. He played it. That game was bad. He played um, Spider-Man Sinister 6. He was excited for that game, and it was a bomb. He played a bunch of LJN games, and it all were bad. I felt so bad for him that... I actually gave up my Metroid game, and I gave it to my friend, and say, "Here, buddy, you deserve a better game. Enjoy, buddy." And he gave me a hug, and I gave him a hug, and I, I he told me thank you. I said, "You're welcome, Michael." I said, "You're welcome, my buddy." Yeah, I think Richard of Utah USA talked about a long time ago how he bought Donkey Kong Junior Math, or Donkey Kong Math, and his friend bought something else, a better game, and I think. Rich said his mom or his friend's mom, one of them, felt so sorry for him because he knew he wasn't enjoying Donkey Kong Math that they bought him, I think it was Castlevania for the NES instead. And Oh, wow. Wait, there was a Donkey Kong Math game? Yeah, for the NES, I believe. Oh, yeah, I remember that. That was not good. And I remember Mario teaches typing in school when we would take keyboarding classes. <laughs> That was kind of fun. Oh yeah, I remember that. That that was awesome. I remember my my, my um my um teacher had Mario teaches typing. It was Miss Portwando. She had Mario teaches typing, and we played those games, and they were fun. There were lot lots loads of fun. Yeah, and yeah, I remember in 2000 uh, around that time. I mean, I, like I said, I didn't really know that GameCom existed. I do remember that commercial after seeing Rerez's review and seeing that commercial it came back to me i said okay i do remember this commercial but i never beyond that never really heard about the game con probably because not many people had it because it was horrible yeah i never heard anybody talk about it in school we were talking about well during that time 2000 we were talking about yeah you know, we were talking about PS1. the game boy yeah like and, the game boy the game boy Advance, game boy Advance sp we talk about you know the game boy color we talk about nintendo 64 gamecube Xbox, PS1, PS2, um, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, all my, all my friends, and one of my friends even talked about the Neo Geo system. Yeah. I remember how awesome the yeah. Game Boy Advance was. Oh man, I used to have one. I loved the Game Boy Advance. Wait, I, I still have one. It's right nice. here, my GBSP. Nice. And it's an AGS 101 model. I had the uh, original model. And I had actually uh, had both. one. I had uh, first I had the original one, and then I sold yeah. it. And then years later, I got it again. I got the SP version, so that was fun. That but the Game Boy Advance when it first came out around 2001, 2002, I believe. I had a lot of fun with that one. I played a lot of Super Mario Advance and the Legend of Zelda Oracle of ECW or Seasons. That was pretty fun. Yeah, I was on Game Boy Color. I remember my first time playing the Game Boy. My first game, believe it or not, was Pokemon Fire Red, and then I got Mega Man Battle Network. Now, Mega Man Battle Network was a video game. It was an RPG where you played as Mega Man, and it didn't take place in the um, the classic series that we all know and love. Instead, it took place in a time where 
they use computers instead of with robots, you know? That's how um, the Battle Network came to be, and there was a series on Kids WB called Meg Men and T-Warrior. I watched that show and I really enjoyed it. It was so much fun. Meg Men and T-Warrior had two seasons. It was a great show, and if you if you were to come across it, I highly recommend you watch it. It's really good, and it's funny, too. Sometimes. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, Oracle Seasons is for Game Boy Color. I was thinking Game Boy Advance because... I never had a Game Boy Color. No, you're thinking you're thinking Legend of Zelda: The Minish Cap or the um, Four Swords. Well, no, I, I, no, I know, I know. Uh, I'm thinking of Oracle Seasons because that, I played that on the Game Boy Advance because it was backwards compatible. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I, I, I remember that. I remember that. I remember the Game Boy being backwards compatible. I have two flashcards. Um, I have the Game Boy Advance one and the Game Boy Color one. Yeah, I remember Four Sword Adventures. That, uh, was, I played for the GameCube. I didn't play it on the. Yeah, I put. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my my friends, we all we all played it on um, Game Boy Advance. I never really back then got to play Oracle of Ages, but I heard it's harder because of uh, it's more of the puzzles, with the puzzles. And... Yeah, I remember that, like the dungeon and stuff. Well, oh, recently, speaking of Zelda, recently I beat Link's Awakening HD. Oh yeah. Yeah, I beat the game, and I beat the final boss, and saw the ending. I remember I did an LP on my channel of Oracle of Ages and Seasons. I, at first I started doing it my own footage, but then it got a little bit too uh, challenging for me. Or I had to like, display capture difficulties, and so the rest of those LPs I used World of Long Plays footage. They allow reuse of their footage as long as you give credit to them. And so I went ahead and completed the LPs, just did commentary over, over their footage doing that. But I never got to actually play Oracle of Ages. Uh, but I remember back in the day, my friend let me borrow Oracle Seasons. And man, I really enjoyed that. Oracle Seasons was very fun to play. Um, my overall favorite Zelda game is Ocarina of Time. What is yours? I would say between Ocarina of Time, the Minish Cap, and the original, or... Um, what's that game? Not the recent one, but... Um, the Twilight Princess. Yeah, dude, I'm hoping to get Twilight Princess again one day. I just need to get a GameCube again. Uh, I need yeah, to get I'm not, GameCube again. Or, or we, you can play or on Wii or we on GameCube, which is really cool. Yeah, I, I don't, I didn't get too used to Wii's controls. I, when I played, yeah, Twilight motion, Princess, motion controls. Yeah, I do agree with you. When I played, Twilight my brother Princess Johnny then, had um, huh? Oh, go ahead. My brother Johnny had it on um, Wii. The Nintendo Wii, and he liked the motion controls, but your turn. Uh, I, I got the Twilight Princess, I mean Twilight Princess, the GameCube version, and man, because I got that December 2006 when it finally came out, and yeah, it it became like, well, my overall, I think my top three Zelda games, if, if for number three would be Twilight Princess, number two is A Link to the Past, and number one is Ocarina of Time. For me, number three would be Ocarina of Time. Number two would be um, um, the Minish Cap. Number one would be probably Link to the Past too. Yeah, a lot of people say A Link to the Past is their favorite, and yeah, A Link to the Past is definitely ECW. Yeah, it's ECW indeed, bro. And all right, so that would be it for this interview. I really thank you very much, Retro Gaming Star, for being here tonight. You're welcome, you're welcome. It's glad to be on the interview. Thank you so much for inviting me. Definitely, and I enjoyed talking to you about the old, old days of gaming and A Link to the Past and, and all these other Zelda games. I really... Uh, and talking about positivity. Yeah, positivity and uh, kind of understanding your love for gaming, like what kind of games you love and all that good stuff. I can tell you have a real passion for video games and for what you do. Like, you like, this, like, the, like with the Super Mega Retro Dudes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I have a passion. I want to be that YouTuber that inspires people like JLove81 does. If you know who JLove81 is, she inspired me to be more positive and that's why I saw the light in JLove81. She was, she was a very good YouTuber. I loved her for what she did and I think of her as my idol, you know? JLove81 will always be my idol because she promotes pot safety, her, Linda AK, the gamer girl, Mega Dan, Dr. Josh, the real gamer, and everybody. 
they they they, they be positive and I wanna be I wanna be that person that spreads the message, make a difference in my community. So I wanna keep it, you know, fresh in my channel. Not 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 negative, just fresh. I wanna have a clean slate in my channel because I love YouTube. I do to have fun and I wanna keep it that way for as long as I live until I turn ninety nine or ninety seven years old when I become an old man. I love J Love. And John Kratz. John Kratz is also a very popular. Yeah, John Kratz is a good YouTuber. He's oh, he's amazing. Yeah, and Brian Trusty's pretty amazing as well. Oh yeah, Brian Trusty's most definitely. I, I I'm friends with Brian Trusty. He's a good guy. Yeah, very positive dude. He made our intro. Yeah. On SC2K. Oh cool. Yeah. He I wonder it. if he would make me an intro. Will he make me an intro? Uh, I think he's actually retired from doing that. Because I tried to get him to make me an oh. intro for the Rombor channel, and he has said he don't do Fiverr anymore. And that, oh, okay, oh, okay, 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 but, <laughs> yeah. you know, my favorite type of music would be heavy metal, I didn't like much of it, back when the hip-hop music genre was booming, I didn't like, I was, it was kind of the myth genre for me, I listened to bands like Metallica, ACDC, Twisted Sisters, Marilyn Manson, Meat Loaf, all these different bands, and I grew up with the thrash metal bands, I grew up with the, um, early 2000s thrash metal, I grew up with a lot of good bands, and, I really do love my metal. I gotta have my heavy metal music. Uh, have you heard of, uh, this is not a heavy metal band, but you, you might think it would be. Have you heard of Lay Monster? Lay Monster? He designs overlays hmm. for, for streamers. He did my overlay design. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I heard of Lay Monster. He did Bushido Blade Warriors overlays. And so, yeah, if you're looking for he's, an overlay, check him out. He's heavy metal indeed. I love Lay Monster. He's a good, he's, he's an awesome guy. Yeah, East Coast Him, Monster's pretty cool. Him, Machido Blade, and everybody, they're all awesome. I think, I think a lot of people, they taught me, um, they taught me to become a better person. And I think that, you know, Lay Monster's a good guy, and Machido Blade War, he's awesome. I think Danny, A.K. Machido Blade, is awesome, and so is Lay Monster. He's amazing. Yeah, he is. Like, they're my good buddies. Yeah. All right, so. And I went. Oh, go ahead. And I went, I went missing for the world, so your turn. I was going to say, that does it for this interview. Thank you once again. And guys, we're out of here. I'm Ron Moore. God bless and take care. Laters.